come past the window uh, as we're going through this. But yeah, all good. I hope you're all well. We're still buzzing from yesterday and having this uh, production N1 arrive. Finally, it's been a very, very long road for, for all of us at Nemo, uh, as lots of you know. So yeah, it was quite a quite a relief to uh, to see this, see some people pinging in online. I haven't got my usual partner in crime to tell me that we're live, so hopefully we are. Uh, I can see some comments on the side. So good afternoon, Ivan and Lee as well. So here we go, guys. We'll let uh, we'll let it build up for a moment or three. And uh, yeah, the purpose of this really is just to show you the car a little bit. Any questions that you've got. I'm going to need your help from the side. Tell me what you want to see, and I will do my best to show you. Mr. Simpson, beautiful. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, buddy. We're going to be uh, we're going to be over at Westmill tomorrow. Um, hopefully, we'll be running the car as well. Uh, we're just going to see how uh, how we go. Lots of things going on at HQ at the moment, so it's just difficult to fit it all in. Hopefully the audio is okay. If everyone could, little somebody could let me know if the audio is okay on here, that would be awesome. Hello, darling. <laughs> see my other half online, so good to see. Hopefully, little one's not terrorizing you too much. So yeah, here we go, guys. A Gamma N1 all production car. This is quite a moment for us. Um, lots and lots of work gone into this. This is three years. This this project started three years ago, probably a little bit more actually, uh, in various other forms before we decided to do a, an eight scale version. Um, and uh, yeah, through COVID, lots of work went on. And yeah, it's here finally, an all production car. What would you guys like to see? You tell me. I've got some tools here as well, so I can try and uh, try and do some mechanicking if needed. Let me flipping down these comments as well here on the side. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. NT Jack watching from Australia. Welcome, buddy. Hope you are well. Uh, Mr. Simpson, loud and clear. Perfect. Thank you. Olivier, we missed you in Montpellier, mate. I hope you're well and doing good and still getting some racing in. NT Jack, rear suspension. Okay. So... I've got a bit of a funky camera angle on this camera to try and get in enough of the shot. So we're not really set up to be a studio here. So uh, I've kind of got a an iPad lodged on a chair on a box on a, you know, high budget stuff. So rear suspension. So you can see we've got loads and loads of droop. Absolutely loads. Which is quite often a common thing uh, when people haven't seen the car in person. They wonder whether it's actually got full suspension travel and stuff like that. But as you can see, it's got, well arguably more than more than our uh, our standard car in this form in fact we'd have to limit this down so much but you get the full suspension droop as you can hear the chassis bottoming down and then a good amount of travel as well which we as you know some of you guys will know we we limit that down with our bump stops or uh, which work very well shocks uh, in some con some conditions uh, rear suspension, mal graphics. Hey, ciao, buddy. Good to see you online. And you know we've been having a pretty busy uh, ten days with with work and uh, also some bits and pieces uh, at home for me as well. So it's been yeah a challenging few days. Bryn, I want to see it in my hands. Well, unfortunately, we can't quite do that yet. However, very shortly, we've got some pretty cool stuff going on on the website, and you'll be able to. AR this into your uh, <laughs> into your workshop, your dining room table, your wherever you want. So that's coming, but you will have your actual one very soon too. Inside camber link adjustment by Art. Okay, so let me try and show you this as best as I can. I'm trying to also make sure that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so in here, obviously, you've got your ball normally and literally it's, it's as simple as nut off and then just space shimming this up and down and the same on the rear i don't know whether you can see we've got a, a spacer in there already at the moment uh, in there so you just unscrew this would come off you'd remove the spacer and then your your camel in position would would go down Take this 
that off. There we go. So you can see that's come off conventionally. And you can see how it's spaced up on there. So you can still adjust your, your roll sensors like you would ordinarily. In some ways, it'll be a little bit quicker because you've just got a nut to do. So that's another big thing with this car. We've tried so hard to make it really, really easy to work on. That's a, a big, big thing about this product. And also not needing too many tools as well to do most of the jobs. So we've tried to use the two and a half mil hardware everywhere we can. So again, nice and durable and all of the screws and stuff like that. Um, also on the, let's take the wheels off. I might be, show you something on the front. I don't know who did those up. Yeah, so trying to use two and a half hardware everywhere we can. It gives a lot more longevity then on the plastic parts as well. And it's just much nicer to work on. I think on an eight scale car, nearly everything should be two and a half mil, really. Okay, so I'm going to stage that back that way a little bit. Let's, uh, my five and a half. So when you want to get access into the disc, I have done a video on this before, but I'll do it again anyway. It's simply, it's not here. And then this pivots that side, so you don't need to take the shock off or anything like that. Same on this side. Obviously, the standoffs are nicely threadlocked as well, so they don't spin. And then you've got super easy access to your screws here. So there's two. You're literally down there for one, down there for one, that one there, and that one there. And then this top lifts off. Everything lifts off with it. So let me just grab just gonna grab a spare gearbox case so that I can show you how they all piece together so nicely. So this is a front gearbox I'm gonna show you here. Now, obviously, to do everything that we do, they split the other way around, so they, they come apart like that. And you can see there's some really heavy puzzle piecing and keying going on. You can see this little lip up here as well. So that when you marry the two halves together, they're a really, really super snug fit. Um, it's going to be really durable, this car. So pleased with the quality of the mouldings and stuff at the factory have done really, really good. Okay, let me have a little look on the side. Okay, this is just updating in. Thank you, Mal. Show the servo saver. Okay, Jack, so you can do that. And I've also got a spare complete one built up here, which is quite conventional in its design. We've learned from some of our other cars on some of these angles here where the pieces puzzle together again, um, just to give a really nice, good action on the servo saver. So I think this is a good upgrade from our old car. And in actual practice, let's just pop that back across, back across onto there. It's quite heavily braced as well. How the servo system works compared to what we had on our prototype car that we've been running for the last couple of years. We've, we've, we've got it uh, really nicely braced now. So I'll turn the radio on in a minute and you have to see all of the throw, but I'll try and stand behind this and pick this up to show you in there. So super low on that rod, as you can see. We've got virtually perfect bump steer as well on the car. So that's really cool. Uh, and obviously to allow this shock to sit as far back into the car as possible, we had to come up with a, a way uh, of moving the traditional Ackerman bar, because obviously that would have been in the way with all of this suspension needing to do its thing here. So um, we actually flipped it, reversed it, and then we've made a, a, a clever shaped tank to allow this to actually run on the reverse. Now, it was quite interesting this because 
when we did that and we squared up this Ackerman bar to the to the very wide posts that we have here, the transformation in steering feel was incredible. Um, real step forward. So it was one of those nice situations where we changed something from a practical point of view, and then we also got a performance gain out of it as well. So that was super cool. Uh, what is the gap from the ground chassis at full extension at the rear? I don't know how I'm going to be able to show that. Let's get the wheels back on. And I've got a tape measure, actually. So One moment, and I can do that one. Guys, if you'd have seen how flooded our track was yesterday, you would not believe that there's people running here today. We, we were, we've had snow in the UK. We had quite a lot up here. And uh, when it melted, wow, <laughs> we uh, we were fully fully submerged. And now there's people running around the track. That was what it was all about when we did the surface change here. Right. Okay. Let's have a look and see what we've got. We are at full bouncing off that correctly. Seven centimeters. So a lot. It really is a lot. Let me see if I can just pick this uh, iPad up and show it at ground height. There we go. You can see just how much travel there is there. It's crazy. And what's amazing about that is this shock is actually the same size as our old front shock so with the way that the levers work you can get away with running much much shorter shocks and still manage to get the same amount of travel point in case on that one is this front shock is actually 10 millimeters smaller in that diameter uh, than our original front shock from the other car but again, gets the same same motion as, as the uh, 319. So we were super chuffed with that. Okay, let's have a look what we've got going on the side. Outboard towing. So, Mr. Simerson. This is our production rear wishbone. And uh, I think this has now been done by somebody else as well. But these are actually inserts here. So this is twofold. You can change, I'm just going to pop the inserts out. You can change the width of the car, the hub. So we've got as uh, a standard coming in the car, you've got obviously standard and then these you can change by one millimeter, the width at the back of the car, which is quite an interesting change actually. There you can see the inserts. What this does allow is we will be offering these with an outboard tow solution, which is something that's completely uh, new in eight scale. It's been done in 10 scale before. Uh, so yeah, we're quite excited by that. So there'll be some outboard tow options of these pills at, at one point in time. Let's click into really nice fit. I'm super happy with that. So yeah, that's our rear wishbone with outboard tow options. So you can run plates both sides and uh, for, the, for the nerds out there there's the uh, the union jack in the bottom of these wishbones so let's see whether we've got anything else what servos do we recommend and rear wing mount okay we'll come back to that so servos I mean, in this car at the moment, this is fitted with uh, with Leroy's radio trays. So these are Samwa. This is a Samwa factory driver. I tend to like KO, um, but there's so many good servos out there. There's so many rubbish ones too. But I think if you go for the for the big three, which I would call would be Samwa, Fataba, or KO, you're not going to go too far wrong. Uh, and then there's obviously lots of other good servos too. Some of the UK guys in our team have good uh, good results with the ludicrous servos. Um, yeah, lots lots of options out there. More and more every week it seems. Okay, so rear wing mount. That's a good one. Let me grab some props. OK. 
Okay. So first off, I'm going to show this on the car um, because you can get an idea of what you can do with this. But this is made out of a very specific material for us, really flexy. Hopefully, I'm not going to do a, a Tesla Elon Musk demonstration on this and uh, <laughs> rip it off in my hand. But you can really get some crazy motions on it and it twists and then just pings back. So this was first done, or the first time I saw this done, and I raced for them was um, from a company called Bergenzoni. They had it on their uh, eight scale car when they were in in business. And it was a brilliant thing. I was uh, super surprised that it never got adopted by everybody because they, they never broke. Um, they save your wing, because imagine when you're crashing, if this can flex like that, you can see me doing there as I'm crashing it on the thing. Um, it just saves your wing as well, so your wings last quite a lot longer. Now, here's one off the car, and you can see that it's got this hole here, so we're going to have a look at that. But I also just wanted to show you how, again, this puzzle piece is into the top of this gearbox case. So everything on the car, you can almost get away with not having screws on it. And that's it, nicely puzzle pieced in to the top of that. This weighs absolutely nothing. So again, big mission of this car, is, as most of you know, if you're watching this, you, you're interested in what we've been up to, is to try and get the weight, everything as low as possible. Um, that's in concept all the way through, even with the radio tray, which is carry over, but super, super low profile. I mean, at, at, at ride height, you can't see, you can't see anything over the top of the wheel. It's, it's unbelievable. Anyway, back to this wing mount. So we'll be running it like this. If for some strange reason or for extra security included in the kit is a brace, trainer wheels, if you like, if you want to go and do some big bashing and 100 foot jumps. So simply this attaches to that eyelet that we saw and then it keys in. Again, it's nicely got keys here on this piece here keys in to the D block and now you've got your traditional I'd say it's a similar feel to to a normal wingman um, obviously in this configuration it does give you maximum protection on rear shock as well if that's something that you were worried about with this on it would be a well nothing's ever impossible but to damage it would be very very difficult it's already very difficult anyway because it's completely out of the way normally when you get rear-ended you your shock shafts are the things that break aren't they because they're literally in the line of fire well here um, not only on the front and the back they're just not in the line of fire they're in a different position altogether so very very difficult to to get to so that's your wing mount option one of the options that's actually fitted to this car you would have seen is a front wing this is an option but again it uh, does a bloody good job of being some protection as well for anyone that's worried about the shocks we've seen that before obviously compared to a conventional car the shocks are so much more protected it's in a different world altogether normally they're stood up here like this aren't they they are the first point of call for for any big crash and uh, like i was trying to explain if i go to to ride height you can't see it you can't see the shocks but i've got to come like and give you a, a funky angle to actually even see them so they're so well protected this could without the wing mount on and without the front wing this just this could drive upside down and i'm sure a few of us will try and drive it upside down at some point <laughs> right let's see what we've got off the side so, so we did your toe done the ring mount droop we did a bit earlier on servos we did note the wing mount is a special plastic we had to run a aluminium one when we were doing all of the running over the last two years because as some of you will probably know, most of the car was 3D printed and we couldn't get this flexy feel that we needed out of the 3D materials. It's just not available right now. So we had to come up with something that was durable enough. So we, we did the uh, aluminium one. Okay, where else are we? Salvo, I see the front spindle carrier and rear hub of plastic. You have the other option ready from the beginning. Yes, we do, because they actually carry over from the 319. So there's a lot of the hardware of the 319 is actually in this car, although the car is completely different to look at and see. 
stuff that was super tried and tested and we know is really, really good, we've, we've not changed. So, like, your drive line, your drive shafts, your diffs, um, our braking system, the caster blocks, the rear hubs, all of that is actually carry over from 319. So if you're already a customer with us and you've got a 319, then, you know, that's pretty cool. You're going to have a lot of options. You're, sorry, you're going to have a lot of parts that are valid for this car anyway. Uh, and then also your optional parts that you've had from your old model will be valid for this too. You can just put them straight onto this. Mr. Brunston, it's looking fantastic. Thank you, mate. You've had a, a good hand and have seen what we've been going through the last couple of years firsthand. So appreciate your support and literally cannot wait until all you guys are running these cars. Uh, that will be that will be a moment when they arrive in and, and go out to you all. <laughs> Stop bashing the car, indeed. Total weight of the car. Do you know what, buddy? I haven't actually had it on the scales yet. We we finished yesterday. Um, the only scales that I've got to hand, they've got to be fairly meaty when I stand on them, probably wouldn't register this car. They they work in like 100 kilo plus, unfortunately. And and hopefully we're not at that point, but we will get it on we will get it on some scales. I certainly felt very light in my hand when I was building it up. Describe the brakes. So the brakes on our car are awesome. That's it. Describe. No, they are we have a special material on our on our pads and our discs. Um, nice steel discs. I don't have any spare ones up here, I don't think, to show you. Bear with me one second and I'll, I'll go and get a set. Okay, so these are our discs. They're like a, almost like a road going Brembo style. Very, very nice. They last so well as well. They give a really good feel on our brakes. And then this is our standard brake disc. Which is light and, and very nice. So yeah, really, really good products those. Okay, what pistons are coming in the kit? So that's a fantastic question. And they will be eight hole 1.2s, eight hole 1.2. We might do some market specific differences to that. So don't 100% hold me to it. Like for example, we may ship the US kits with something slightly different. Uh, that is topic of conversation literally right now. But at the moment, the plan is to be uh, eight hole 1.2s. Uh, the car is going to ship with 2.8 mil roll bars all round. The reason that that's quite stiff on the front, so obviously with the design to be able to fit everything in, we've got quite a short front roll bar here. Uh, and so to get the same sort of leverage and action that you would have if it was a, a widespread one, it needs to be a bit thicker to get that engagement. So 2.8 mil roll bar front and back uh, and Spring wise is going to be our grey orange spring. So Olivier, first batch to France, same same as uh, pretty much everyone else's, but we're going to be trying to get everyone's out in the same time period as much as possible. Bearing in mind, obviously, we are a small company, so we haven't got a huge workforce to to get the hundreds of kits out, but we will be doing our very best. Um, as you know, this is the first production car that's been built up, and um, we had to just check the rear gearbox because that's the part that's been giving us the, the hold up. Uh, we're happy with that now. Uh, the mold was updated and, and all those other good things. So we did this final test now. Um, so we need to make that part, which is happening at the moment. So I think we're probably just a few few weeks away and uh, the kits will start leaving, uh, leaving the factory and uh, then finding their way out to, to everybody. Here's the, the naughty offending piece it's not offending anymore so we like it now but yes we uh had some manufacture uh, issues with that which are now fixed okay so i'm gonna just go quiet i just need to come on the side mr spencer looking forward to seeing one in the flesh in a few weeks yeah absolutely uh, you guys have got a evolution models they're gonna be a 
good stockists of ours uh, in the UK. So check them out as well, along with other other great partners that we've got. They have a, a an exclusive team day here in a few weeks' time, uh, of which we're going to make sure there's one of these available um, for you guys to look at. So looking forward to that. Sylvan, good to see you online, buddy. Missing you. And uh, yeah, well done again to your daughter. It's getting faster and faster all the time. I see she was racing again the other day, so well done. Mr. Wright, congratulations. Thank you, buddy. It's a big team effort, this, um, from all of us. And Jao, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Does the suspension on high traction tracks have the same preparation as the current car? I think it's pretty similar. Um, obviously, I've been lucky enough to do most of the running with the prototype car, predominantly because, you know, me going and breaking it, no one really was too worried about that. They could see what we were up to. Um, if it had been Leroy doing that running and we were we were breaking things, then, you know, people are so quick to, to criticise these days, as we know. So, um, in my experience, it's got a really big window of, of operation even when like suspension doesn't feel quite right the lap time is still good so that's always a good sign of a car i think um and yeah just a big window we we stopped really doing very much setup changes probably six months ago even with when you know when leroy took over doing the, the fast running and, and and ran at the worlds and stuff like that um you know it was just incredible how little work in terms of setup we were doing on the car we had to do quite a little bit of work to keep our 3d printed parts together but in terms of actual setup there was very little that was going on um which is awesome that's one of the big things again for this car is just want it to be easy for the customers um you know we're not all lee martin and these other super fast drivers just want something that's going to be fun to drive we can turn up at the track have fun with our friends uh do well and then and then go home without having to do loads of work so I feel that's what we've achieved with this. I'm super excited, as I keep saying, uh, to get this out to everybody. <laughs> Engine in the background is too lean on the bottom. Yes, it probably is. And one of them's too rich as well, I'd imagine, as it's uh, being run in. Okay. Ivan, I'm looking forward to running over it. If anybody has it, bad MCC, what the truck? Well, yeah, the, the, the truck the truck is uh, one of the next in the line, Ivan. Um, we, uh, we we definitely will be doing a definitely will be doing a, a, a truck version, and here's some prototype bits of that. Huge. So yeah, that's one of the next ones to be done. Okay, so Ken, sorry, I'm late to the video. Got a superstar just walked into the office. The man with the talent that designed it. Uh, okay, so yeah, Ken, where am I? Late to the video. How does the new lowdown switch compare to your usual stand up in terms of damping? Again, quite similar. Um, this isn't a cantilever system, so you know we, you don't have to end up coming up with different solutions to try and induce some of the things you need on a, on a cantilever suspension. So it's quite conventional in, in terms of what we're running with pistons and oils and springs. Uh, in fact, for me, in the early days, I was actually running the shocks off my 319 spring package and piston package so yeah you won't you won't be spending too much time having to learn that less talking and more bedding in please said kev yes indeed it looks good but i'll stay with the truck that's fine ivan we'll be we'll be busy working on the truck for you uh, that is next in line so yeah, there we go, guys. Anybody with any other questions? We've been going for about half an hour. Thank you for persisting uh, with it and having a look at what we've been up to. Um, any further questions, please? And if I've missed one on the side, just uh, just post it again so that I can see it and I'll cover it. Alan, do you think we'll get them for the first round of the Nationals? Absolutely. Um, that would be, yeah, yeah. You will, you will be running it for the, for the Nationals. Uh, gearing, yes, the gearing is the same as the 319 performance car. Um, so, yeah, all of that's the same. And, and again, like we were saying, is a good crossover if you've already got a 319. Um, you'll be able to have all of that set up and, and ready to go, which is an interesting thought, actually. It's something that Lee talks about quite a bit. If you've got a spare um, diff and piston and uh, pinion, you'll be able to have all your different oils set, and it takes no time at all to get everything out you've got a matched pinion with the ring on your on your diff um and you'll be away for us that could be quite a 
game changing thing because we do different internals for our diffs as well for, for high traction tracks. So you could have a set of normal gear diffs and a set of high traction gear diffs set and ready to go. And you'll have them in and out of this car in crazy, you know, crazy quick time. 10 minutes, I would have thought you'd had everything done, which is uh, transformational, I think. Lorenzo, thank you. So to measure the droop, it's going to be done on blocks. Is, that's a that's a good point, uh, good point, David. And um, we have some Nemo blocks that are going to be available to purchase. Some very high quality printed 3D blocks and gauge. And uh, yeah, there'll be details of those coming out pretty soon. And they're well priced as well. But you you will do the droop on on the on the blocks. Can we share the building manual on the web page? Yep, that's coming along very shortly. Uh, may even be finished over this weekend. And we have some super, super cool stuff that's going to accompany the manual as well. You'll have seen, if you follow us on uh, Facebook, some of the amazing animations that uh, my, my good friend Paul Kelsall's done um, from, from his company. And so we're going to have a fully animated manual as well, where you'll be able to see exactly how each part build so we're, we're super excited for that um so yeah it won't be long and you'll be able to see all of those things yep droop box like the x-ray andrew exactly yep c hub uh jack yep delaware pro available in usa uh nemo racing usa which is uh, our company too uh, they will have everything at the same time that we do including all of the spare parts and everything as well so you can head on over to that to, to get yourself sorted there uh, yep, Dave, again, the 319 blocks, caster blocks do carry over. Um, so if you've got your optional aluminium ones of those, they can just fit straight on. Yes, Nick, new body shell for the kit. There's actually going to be two uh, two options on body shell. We're going to have our um, LMR one, which you guys will have seen. Anyone that's looked at any of the uh, prototype running has been with one of these on. Uh, and then a Gamma uh, have done a version as well, which will be slightly less downforce. Um, and that's what the uh, first cars will ship with, I think. So, yeah, you're going to have two options on, on body shell. Okay. Let's see if I've missed anything. Mr. Rodriguez, you saw the car working in Barcelos. And, uh, you know, I, every time I see you or, or, or see something online with yourself i just got uh, full of love for the help that your family gave me get home because uh, otherwise we'd still be in portugal so once again thank you for helping us with our big car um it seems like i'm having a bit of a run of bad luck with doing international races and my big car breaking down because i broke down on the way back from montpellier this year as well uh, for a week uh, so yeah perhaps i shouldn't do quite so many international races which is not going to work very well because there's a load coming up perhaps i'll stick to planes David Crabtree, Carlos Killer, thank you, buddy. We're looking forward to getting uh, a kit very, very soon into into Tyler. Um, see Tyler Jones for us is going to be our kingpin and back in back with us again. Um, super, super excited to see what he can do results wise. Um, but, you know, I, I can only imagine places like Thornhill and stuff like that. The car is going to be absolutely killer there. Um, sorry for the uh, continual revving of a of a Reds engine. Mal, you're the Reds man. What do they need to do with that? Uh, sometimes you can't make this stuff up. Okay. Can I run this buggy on any off-road style of track? Absolutely, you can. Um, if you didn't see some of our earlier stuff, it has exactly the same suspension as travel. Works in the in a very very similar way as as a as a normal buggy. Uh, so yeah, there's absolutely no reason why you, you can't run this on, on any surface. Um, inherently, it's much more stable as well. So you're going to be very, very surprised at uh, the results you see all around. We've spent two years testing this in as many different environments as possible. When we first showed the world what we were up to uh, on our YouTube uh, channel, which is quite a while ago now, we said we were going to put a pack together and try and take in as many places as we could. And that's exactly what we've done. We've been over to the States. We've been, we've done the world championships with it. We've done two European championships with it. We've done a national series with it. Um, plus 40 euros as well. So we, we've tried to give it as big a chance to show some strange things as possible. And all we've seen is, uh, is delight uh, running it. I, I love, I absolutely love racing this. Uh, I've been racing 30 years myself. So I've driven lots of stuff. 
um, been lucky to, to to get quite a lot of good results and and drive with uh, with the big manufacturers and stuff as well. And yeah, I couldn't be couldn't be prouder of what the team have done with this. You're gonna you're gonna love it. Okay, darling, you're biased. You would say it looks awesome, but thank you. You've had to put up with uh, all of this work for the last few years, so thank you. Mr. Spencer, if you ever get time, we get to hear the reasons you guys had to go down the route, lay down shocks. Yep, lower center of gravity. Uh, how did you get to the final design? So we've had quite a few different designs along the way. Uh, the main man is that's the next to the side of me uh, at the moment, Mr. Clark, Jonathan Clark. Um, we've had, I don't know, five, six versions of this and then loads of little changes along the way. So the first thing we needed to do was just check the concept worked. So that was quite rudimentary in its, in its first yeah. design. Yeah, yeah. Say, JC, yeah, come, and, come and say some words. Uh, the main thing was to lower the centre of gravity. And the benefit of actually lowering the centre of gravity it actually makes the car feel more consistent. It feels like it doesn't want to topple over as much uh, is what you normally, you know, on, especially on the grippy track, you know, you, you teetering on the edge of it, grip rolling and stuff like that. Whereas the lay down shots, it just seems to settle the car. And Bigger from, window. Yeah. And from testing, people that have run the car said it just feels more consistent because you're not on that edge all the time when you're driving it I, I think you can feel that actually from like almost turn one certainly at Nemo when you when you throw it into there just just the level of stability that it, it feels um, and I think it inherently makes the car a little bit stiffer in in roll in its own right so it means that you can run the shocks a little bit softer than you perhaps you would on a normal car which then gives you the benefit through the for the bumpy stuff um, because it can react quickly to all of the ruts that's getting thrown at it so like for me at our national john the obviously leroy finished second at that it was the first time that he'd ran this car um, and the only national that he's done with it so far obviously elliot was was amazing and won that race which was which you know good, very, very good but the the place where lee looked the best in my opinion was through all of the dirt rough section um he could just place the car wherever he wanted and it was just less less upset it spent less time being angry over the surface it was going over and as you know yourself it was pretty it was pretty rough at that national so yeah i think um the main thing, low centre of gravity. My my real big push, um, which was a pain sometimes for, for for JC, was just ease of of work and, and and a lack of screws. I wanted to have as minimal screws as possible everywhere. So this whole you know four screws and your your diffs out. That was a big push for me. Puzzle piecing these gearbox cases so that everything hangs off the bottom. Again, that was a challenge for for Jonathan, which he did amazing on. Um, because then when you do take everything out, it all stays in place. Your roll bar stays in place. Again, it's just less work, less maintenance. And I think that's a big thing for us. We want people spending more time driving the cars and having fun and less time actually having to, to work on the things. And also, you have to bear in mind, like the front end, the, the shocks are, are quite a lot out of the kind of danger impact zone if you roll it over. Yeah. I've seen comments about people saying, you know, you know, the front shock's going to get knocked off, but with the combination of the front wing and how low the actual front shocks are, if anything, basically what you'll find, because the shock's the other way around, the ground will actually roll over the shock rather than having two vertical shocks. It'll actually, you know, if you, if you, if you look here, if you hit anything, basically you're going to be rolling over the shot it yeah it does come across the top like that you're going to dig into the ground like your normal shock towers do but you're going to be so good with these anyway you're not going to be crashing so you don't have to worry <laughs> about that um okay so let's just quickly run down the side all the weight seems to be very low good for balance and rolling yeah exactly like jc is saying if i hold it like that it really it really shows just how low everything is in that car it's yeah, absolutely it, amazing it, it doesn't really make sense having shocks very heavy items so high up on the car so obviously the goal was to lower the center of gravity as much as possible but also have it easy to maintain and as strong as possible to be honest exactly and let's be you know clear i think i think lay down cars are cool aren't they at the end of the day we, we all we all love this hobby there's so many so many elements to it that we all love one of them is is the cars are cool and and uh I think, obviously, biasedly, that this is a very, very cool-looking car. Um, it's intriguing. It's different. Uh, it's been pretty stale, really, uh, the RC cars for, for 
quite a lot of time. Like I said, I've been an act, active racer for many years and, and I've been and, and driven all of these early things that perhaps people were uh, saying when they didn't really see what we were doing, that it had been done before. It's never been done like this before in eighth scale. Uh, I can definitely say that. I've, I've been around long enough and I've driven the, the Leroux and all these other things that it's sometimes likened to. This is completely different how this works. But yeah, it's going to be good for, for everybody to, to see that and, and come and have a try. If it's something that intrigues you, then, you know, come and jump in. The water's good. You're going to enjoy it. It's going to be a good ride. There's going to be a lot of setup stuff, lots of videos coming from us as well. Uh, we're trying really hard to make that user experience as good as possible. Um, so I'm just going to close out in case there's just any other questions on the side as I've been going for 40 minutes and you'll all be going to sleep. Uh, VRP pistons are superb in this car. Um, it was a consideration and, and still at some point, you know, to try and get those pistons included uh, in, in the kit, but it's just too expensive to be able to do that. But they will be something that we'll be recommending, absolutely. And we're going to be working with... Uh, with VRP to, to do that as cost effectively as possible. Nick, sorry, JC, you want to say something? I'm saying if you think the N1 looks good, you ought to wait for the uh, truck. <laughs> that, that's just going to be is as special, if not more special, because it the truck lends itself even more to the kind of lay down shock kind of setup. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing, the truck. I'm so, but very excited for that one. Um, very, very excited. So, is the Gamma N1 in Australia now? Not yet, no, um, but uh, they will be not long and they will be in all markets where if you've, you've got an active distributor and if you haven't, just uh, drop us a mail and we'll, we'll get you hooked up, no problem. Russell Kinsey, great to see you online. Hope you're well, buddy. That's a blast from the past and thank you. Uh, thank you for the nice, nice words there. Uh, would it be a good car for a beginner, not knowing the pro-level setup? Absolutely. I think we've, again, tried quite hard to simplify this car. So there's a lot less options that you can you can do. Um, we've tried to do the work on roll centers and stuff for everybody uh, and simplify it. So we're definitely not a believer of just make 60 holes everywhere and one of them must be right because that is right. There will be one that is right. But from a consumer point of view, you just get yourself lost. So... As we all know, it doesn't matter how good a car is, if you set them up wrong or, or your suspension's binding or whatever, they just don't work properly. So, yeah, we've tried to keep it as simple as possible. So from a beginner's point of view, I think you'll have a really great time with this. Uh, it's got a nice big wide window. And as Mal said on the side, I think it's an easy car for Lazy John. So a Lazy John will be, will be similar to a, a newbie, I think. Um, you just want to come to the track and run it and have fun. And that's what we're all here to do. So yeah, I think that's it, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna close it out. With that um, thank you very much for joining us and having a look at this. Uh, if retrospectively there's some questions that you you suddenly think, oh, I wish I'd asked that, just leave a comment on the side. I'll give a, a scan through uh, later on, and I'll I'll do my best to come and answer them. And uh, yeah, what an amazing journey and not planned visit from the man that uh, has has made this possible with the side of me, Jonathan Clark. So absolutely awesome. Um, I'll go and do some engine tuning outside because I think that's probably needed. And hopefully I'll see lots of you trackside very, very soon. Thanks for joining.